right. Hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and I am one thirsty guy. Let me tell you, a lot of stuff going down in the store here, and sometimes you have to drink through, well, some average wine to get to the really good stuff, and well, this tasting had some, some good stuff in it. I shouldn't say it was all average, but, you know, Spanish wine, some of the best value in the wine world today, and Rias Baixas, one of the hardest areas to pronounce in Spain. Uh, it's up in Galicia, just north of Portugal, and a lot of X's and S's in there that aren't pronounced anyways. Uh, they make some very good whites, Albariño being the grape of choice up there, Godeo, another great grape, but this is from Abadia de Santa Campillo, and it's an Albariño from that Rias Baixas area. Nice, slight briny character to this wine, some lemon citrus, melon fruit, all the state bottled. About 20,000 cases, so rather large producer here. Uh, light spritz to the palate with a nice lemon zest uh, showing on the finish as well as some distinct minerality, that uh, salty kind of briny note showing on the finish, leaving the tongue refreshed and ready for food. And one of the things they have up here is some of the weirdest seafood you will ever see. Looks like something out of a Star Wars movie. I remember my trip to Galicia. But it uh, goes very well with Albariño, the seafood. All right, Artesa. This is a winery that's owned by the Cordenu family of wines and all these wines from, from that same family of imports. And uh, this is a winery, Corneros, that started out as a sparkling wine producer, Cordenu Napa, and then sparkling wine business is tough, man. They decided, well, we better start making something other than sparkling wine if we want to pay the bills here. And, well, not like they need to pay the bills, but to make it a viable business and started producing Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Cabernet, and make some very good Pinot Noir still under this label. The Carneros 2010 is what we had this day, a very pretty bouquet here, strawberry, cherry, fruit on the nose, some pretty floral notes, and a little bit of all spice showing there, one of the things we love about Pinot, that floral and spice notes coming through on the nose. Bright red berry fruit on the tongue with smooth and velvety texture, and uh, kind of fresh uh, finish here, some pretty floral notes. A lot of ripe, juicy fruit, though, very good little ball of Pinot at 21 bucks. Vigna Zacco Tempranillo. This is what I call cooking wine. Anything that, you know, in the $10 price range is, to me, as long as it's fit to drink, you should cook with it. Um, fresh berry, red berry fruit, kind of earth, dried herbs. Simple but pleasant bouquet here. Uh, that fresh berry fruit showing on the tongue with that light earthy notes. Uh, good freshness, but rather simple uh, for $11. That's what you get a lot of times. $21, the Vigna Pomal Reserva from Rioja. It's a very traditional producer, which that means is a little of that coconut in the nose, some dry tea notes, a little wild strawberry, fine herbs there. Pretty classic, as I mentioned before, that light strawberry fruit coming through on the palate with nice freshness, some earthy notes showing. Um, you know, 21 bucks, not the best Rioja I've ever had, but not bad. 2006 vintage, starting to show some signs of maturity there. Uh, 2005 Legaras from Ribera del Duero, just south of Rioja, Ribera del Duero, uh, produces wines that are Tempranillo and Tempranillo blends. This is a... 100% uh, Tempranillo, Tinto Fina, a uh, good amount of that dark uh, cherry fruit showing on the nose here, some dark spices, a little dried meat-like aromas. You can sense meaty note to these Tempranillos from Ribeiro del Duero. Nice richness on the palate. This wine's got a lot of that dark cherry fruit showing some soft tannins, a firm hand of acidity, and a very nice finish here. This 2005 vintage drinking very nicely at the moment. Some spice and floral notes on the finish. An excellent bottle of Ribeiro del Duero at 39 bucks, And then... The real winner in this lineup, yes, the Bodega Septima Grand Reserva Malbec. Oh, I'm sorry, Grand Reserva, this is a blend. It actually has just over half Malbec, 55%, some Cabernet Sauvignon, and Tanat make up the rest of the Brent. Tanat, a very tannic grape. And uh, this is the seventh winery in this group, thus the name Septima. And a very aromatic bouquet here, blackberry, black cherry fruit, notes of meat, dried meat, violet floral notes, uh, kind of a roasted quality to the fruit. Really lovely dark berry fruit on the tongue with some rich uh, earth and spice showing as well. Nice freshness to this wine still and some tannins here coming through. That's right, it's a young wine, 2009, but an excellent bottle of wine for 21 bucks. My pick of this litter. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.